Hello and welcome to all our viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwarz, licensed midwife and MC here at Gold. And I'm chatting today with Dr. Jennifer Barnes about the upcoming presentation here at Gold. First of all, welcome back, Jennifer. Oh, thank you for having me again. It's such a pleasure to see everyone. It's wonderful to have you back here, back by popular demand, I have to say, and <laughs> it's wonderful to have you here. You are, of course, part of our Gold Neonatal Online Conference 2022, and this time on a brand new topic. Yeah, right. And so first of all, because this is an international conference, why don't you introduce yourself to our viewers and tell us a little bit, first of all, where in the world you are? Yeah, so I'm Jennifer Barnes, um, no, known by my colleagues as Jenny. I am the neonatal clinical pharmacy specialist at Levine Children's Hospital, which is in Charlotte, North Carolina, so southern United States. Um, and I've been doing the NICU for quite, quite a number of years. I've been in pediatric practice for, gosh, I believe it's been 11 years now, and then I've um, been doing uh, neonatal specifically for um, over six years. So. Fantastic. And you're coming to us this year with a brand new topic. Last time you came with a, a, a very exciting topic, too. It was about the use of caffeine in neonates, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, a very, very common medication to um, a still common disease state, but less common um, issue of, of hypotension. And so I'm going to talk about I get tons of questions about um, vasopressors and these types of medications. So I figure it's a topic that probably many of you out there across the world also have uh, concerns about and kind of need a little um, more information on. Absolutely. So yeah, your new topic here is titled, Get the Lowdown on Neonatal Hypotension. Hypotension, uh, of course, neonatal hypotension can have a, a myriad of causes, right? I mean, the list is almost end endless. Can you talk a little bit about what kind of uh, uh, reasons there could be for neonatal hypotension. Oh, yes. And I think, I mean, hypotension is very common in, in the um, NICU. I mean, in part, it's because we take care of very premature babies. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, during transition from intrauterine to extrauterine life, so that birthing process, um, you have more hemodynamic changes than in any other time in your entire life. Um, and so when you're premature, you just don't have those mechanisms to really help prepare babies for, for that transition. So a lot of times babies get um, hypotensive and, and can have shock, which is usually hypotension with um, clinical signs um, in, the, in that first initial couple of days of life. But then as we know, babies, you know, they can have sepsis or mm -hmm. have um, cardiac failure. And so there's a myriad of reasons also later on in, in life where they also can have hypotension and shock and, and even think, and what's interesting is that, um, you know, maybe potentially what agent you would use very much changes depending on what that underlying cause of hypotension is. So it's a very interesting um, for us pharmacy nerds out here to think about mm -hmm. uh, which, which medication to use and what dosing to. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, you mentioned it, of course, you are a pharmacy specialist uh, in the NICU there. It's such an important position, uh, not to say every position in the NICU is, of course, essential, but like, uh, you know, the dosing the has to be so exact because we're dealing with tiny, itsy bitsy little vulnerable ones, right? So it needs to be extremely exact. And um, it is, of course, very different. Also, the kind of medication that can be given to um, an, an older child, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, vasoactives are very interesting. They're the only medications, I shouldn't say the only, but they're one of the few medications where you very you hit different receptors and have different mm -hmm. mechanisms of action depending on the dose. And so that's always, um, you know, very, very unique. So I love working very closely with my nurses, my nurse practitioners, mm -hmm. and my uh, physicians on um, optimizing therapy and which, which agent to choose and what dose to start at and what to titrate up to even. That's fantastic. Now, tell me this, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but from what I remember or what I've seen is there is still, it's not very clean cut, the treatment for hypotension, for neonatal hypertension, right? It feels like there's still some kind of, I don't know, it's maybe wrong to say controversy, but like, uh, why is it so difficult? Well, you would think that, you know, for example, dopamine has been around for 
decades and decades and decades. <laughs> so, so long. And you would think that there would be this huge plethora of data behind these old medications. You know, yeah. epinephrine's been, I think, been used since the 1920s. Forever, um, yeah. Yeah, so for, for forever. And so you would think there's all this data, but there's really not a lot of it is um, antidotal information. And then also we're kind of, we're, we're learning more. We're, we're studying more of how to compare these agents. And we've always done this, but are there different, um, just because we've always done it, is that the, the best way to do it? And so um, that part of it. And then the other thing is, you know, we can't even agree with the neonatology how to even define um, hypotension and when to treat necessarily in, um, in neonates. So um, that that's also a very um, complicated matter as far as how are you defining hypotension even. Mm, um, so that's interesting. It's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Can you t describe that a little bit more in detail? Why is this so complicated? Why isn't it more clean cut? Oh, yeah. Well, well certain, some of it is, um, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, hypotension is very common in, um, right after birth. And mm -hmm. so your blood pressure changes quite drastically in that first right. 24 hours of life and in that first week. And so um, it's hard. It's very difficult to figure out what's the normal. Um, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. We know that it's lower initially. Um, but what is and, and the other thing is why is we don't have good data to say this number is associated with this bad outcome too. Right. Um, so we know, well, this number is low, but does that um, correlate to worse outcomes for the baby? Does it mean increased mortality? Um, and, and, you know, all these other morbidities that are associated with it as well. So I think some of that is, you know, still lots of debate. <laughs> yeah, and probably not enough data yet to really um, look back on saying like, okay, if a neonate had that kind of uh, blood, you know, uh, is that really, as you said, you know, combined with other outcomes or later in life, does that really have an impact for anything later in life because mm -hmm. of that, right? So yeah, makes it difficult. I can see that. I really can um, can see that. That makes a lot of sense. So uh, what other, you know, looking forward to this presentation very much, what other um, little nuggets of wisdom or anything you hope our viewers will uh, walk away with after this presentation? Yeah, so I think I'm um, hoping to talk about is, you know, some other, we, we historically always use um, a mean arterial pressure um, mm -hmm. being the gestational age, um, but hopefully to even introduce people to some of the um, new percentile charts and some new ways to even look at blood pressure um, mm. based off of macro data. Um, as well as I, I'd love to talk about some of the other newer agents that we may not be common with. I probably most... Um, you know, practitioners and NICUs are, are used are used to seeing dopamine, for example, but right. really talking about what is the data behind, or dobutamine, um, but what's some of the data behind, you know, epinephrine or um, vasopressin, which is a newer um, agent to be really used in the, in the NICU. So maybe just hoping to introduce them to, um, to some, some agents as well and, and kind of talk about what are the pros and cons and um, if you do use it, um, what to monitor for and, and how to dose. Wonderful. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jennifer Barnes. It's been a pleasure seeing you again here, and we're looking very much forward to your presentation. Yes, thanks so much for having me again, and I really look forward to um, this presentation in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and now this is some information for our viewers. The presentation, Get the Lowdown on Neonatal Hypotension by Dr. Jennifer Barnes, is of course part of our Gold Neonatal Online Conference 2022. We get started in just a little bit. Our opening keynote presentation uh, is on May 31st, so just around the corner. And this particular presentation by Dr. Barnes is going to be live on June 6th. But don't worry, all of the presentations are always being recorded. So if you cannot commit to a live date or you are working in the NICU <laughs> during that time, of course, there will be recording available for you. And again, thank you, Dr. Barnes, for speaking here with me. And for everyone else, I invite to go to goldneonatal.com to find out more and sign up for the conference. I hope to see everyone there at the conference. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.